닌자 Welcome to the Super Sentai Brothers. This is episode 42 of View to a Kaku Ranger, the internet's best and only podcast dedicated to Ninja Sentai Kaku Ranger. Every week we watch an episode of the show, we share our thoughts with you, the listeners. My name is Matt J. With me as always is my co-host and brother Dave. Dave, how you doing today? Just, uh, it's just sticky. Just kind of. Yeah, just sort of a general, a general uh, sort of malaise of humidity. Yeah, just a miasma of humidity. A miasma. You know, I knew I was looking for a good M word for the humidity, and I don't know why malaise is what I came up well, with. Well, it's I I am experiencing malaise, so sure, because I mean, of the miasma can cause a malaise. Yeah. Regardless, uh, we're not here to talk about the weather today. Are we not? I mean, I mean, other than our sort of standard opening segment, um, our standard pre-opening segment, Dave, because our standard opening segment is our two-time award-winning Chunk Dave shining in the heavens. There are five stars. What is our first star of the week? So our pre-star, Matt, is the name of this episode. Listen, Dave, it's very hot in this room. <laughs> I'm very tired, and I don't have the fan on. <laughs> no, I'm not. Listen, man, I understand. I just, it's a good title. The title of this episode you know what? I was going to do it, and it feels weird. You need well, to say Well, then today, it. Dave, we will be watching episode 42 of Ninja Sentai Kaku Ranger. It is called The Plundered Ninja Power. But before we get into that, the aforementioned five stars, Dave, what is that first star of the week? Now I'm dying to know. Thanks. No, thanks, Matt. I just, uh, so the first star of the week is that our grandmother is coming to visit. That's very exciting. Yeah, it is. It's really neat. Uh, well, mom and dad are coming to visit from Sweden, and... They are bringing grandma with them. Well, not sort of. She's going to meet them here. She's not like currently in Sweden and coming back. Sure. Because again, uh, we are not actually Swedish. Well, that's not te- totally true. We actually are fairly Swedish, like by ancestry. Did you know that? I know that there's some knocking around back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually are like fairly Swedish by ancestry, uh, but it's a couple of It's like a little ways back. But our parents are not actually Swedish. They just live in Sweden. My grandmother's coming to visit. That's not, that's just nice. <laughs> here's the, here's the funny part, Matt. Oh, what's the funny I part, Dave? And am, I, I think it's funny. I'll leave that to you to judge. I am a 34 year old uh, adult male and I, I'm a professional, and I am uh, respected in my profession, and people come to me to teach them things, and I own a house and a car, and uh, I at least two leather-bound books, as long as we're getting in on that bit. Okay, sure, sure. So far, yeah. this bit is hilarious. So, yeah. So <laughs> here is the thing that I have discovered, Matt, is that even with all of those things being true, you do not know how dirty your apartment is. Your house, in my case, you do not realize how dirty your house is until you realize that your 95-year-old grandmother True. is coming she to visit. She has been to my place a few times. And she always says very nice things about my place. But I, like, I like, I go into, oh, yeah. like, crazy mode when she is on the way. No, and let me be, let me, first of all, let me be super clear. Our grandmother is a darling, sweet woman who never in like a million years, I think, would even consider saying something about the state of a place where she was like a guest. Sure. Like, but it's but that just, doesn't it's matter. like the knowledge. Yeah, it's the knowledge of her presence. And like mom and dad have stayed with me for like months. Well, yeah, mom has for up to two months at a time. And it's like, you know, listen, it's mom and dad. I want things to be clean. But... But grandma coming that is, is, that is ju- a like whole it's other just game. a different story. Yeah. So I have been in between like trying to take care of the twins. Beth and I have just been doing our level best. I've been like sealing off rooms. I'm like, okay, this room is done. <laughs> Shut the door. 
Nobody goes in, nobody goes out, because if anybody goes in there, things are going to get messed up, and then it's going to be dirty for grandma. So just, like, everybody be cool. Like, a bunch of doors in my house are closed off to hell. <laughs> so, I feel like yeah, you are just treating been... grandma coming to visit like you treat, like, getting the house kosher for Passover. Yeah, very much like that thing. Like, okay, this room is good. Just, just stop it. Like, just put this one on lockdown. We're good. Move on to the next room. So yeah, but I'm uh, I'm very excited. Grandma's going to come visit, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. I actually haven't. This is weird. I haven't seen Grandma in. It's actually been like one or two years since I've seen her. Well, that'll be very nice. When well, yeah. we can talk about the actual well, logistics yeah, of when our grandmother is yeah, coming so grandma's to visit. Going to visit. Uh, that's the first star of the week is that I still do not, um, my house is not grandma's, my house is not grandma clean and, uh, that's a terrible thing. So Matt, what is our second star of the week? Second star of the week, Dave, is that as we mentioned before, it's, it's summertime. It's getting a little hot out. And, uh, and so I decided that I was going to hop out to the store and pick up some more summery clothing. Uh, I tend to cool. wear a lot of like long sleeved shirts with the sleeves rolled up. Like that's sort of my go to uh, outfit. Like if I was a cartoon character, that is just the outfit that I would be wearing constantly. But it's summertime, well, Matt, and uh, I'd like to point out that someone has drawn you as a cartoon character, and that is exactly what you're wearing. That is true. That is 100 percent true. <laughs> um, but I decided that it's summertime, and so I wanted to uh, sort of branch out, and so went to Target and I bought a couple of colorful shirts. I mean, you know, colorful for me. Like, one of them is yeah. kind of a, like, tropical shirt with pictures of birds and plants on it. But the, like, actual fabric of that shirt is sort of a muted gray. So, I mean, we're still we're still working sort of within my comfort zone. <laughs> but, yeah, you know. I was going to say, you're not, like, terribly far outside the zone. No, but I, I got a couple of compliments out of them uh, when I wore them to work. I wore that and I got another one that's like, again, like a button-down plaid shirt. But the colors, the colors, Dave, are a lot more exciting. And so I told them, because I realized uh, why I had gotten those shirts. When I got compliments on them, I told those people that the way I decided to buy those ones is I just walked over to a shelf that had a bunch of shirts on it that I would never wear. You know how, like, you walk into okay. a store and you're like, okay, these are the ones that are sort of my zone. Like, I know what my shirts look like. And this kind of looks like the shirts I have. So this is going to be a shirt that I will wear. And as it turns out, all that it takes to, like, radically change... Well, you know, again, not radically radically, but... Somewhat, my, yeah. Minorly radically, enough that everyone at work notices, is to just walk to the shelf that is, like, directly to the left of that one and pick up a different shirt. Like, it is astonishing <laughs> how little you have to do to get people to notice a change when you literally wear kind of the same uniform every day for three years. So you've got to get one shelf over, and that's literally it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So next time, uh, listeners, you can use this uh, when you are out shopping. If you, if you want to spruce stuff up, turns out it is remarkably easy, and you don't have to do that much. Just change out one of your plaid shirts for a bird shirt, and you are set. Like, you're good. Man, I just, that makes me realize I don't have any bird shirts. That's true. Yeah. But you, but you know, you can do it, Dave. I believe in you. It's summertime. Go get some, go get a fun summer bird shirt. Go get a fun summer bird shirt. That's, that is so my, what? Uh, I, I implore you, Dave. I exhort you to go out and get yourself a fun summer bird shirt. But Dave, you know what else I want? I what want, do you want, Matt? I want you to tell me what the third star of the week is. So the third star of the week, Matt, is it's a new store that has opened up by me. Uh, I live, if, you, uh, if you're in the Cleveland area, I live near the Cedar Lee District. And mm -hmm. if, it's, it's just like a cool little, it's like a couple of, it's like a couple of blocks and it's like restaurants and little shops and some bars and there's like a music store and all this stuff. Like it's a cool little yeah, yeah. zone, right? There's a movie theater. And uh, what has opened up down the street is um, a head shop. Okay. 
I'm honestly a little surprised there wasn't one there already. Yeah, it does seem like the sort of thing that would have existed there already, but it didn't. And like, listen, whatever you do in like the privacy of your own home, like I'm not too worried about it, especially if it's like legal where you live, like that's not my thing, but whatever. But like, here's the deal with with head shops, I think, Matt. And now, okay, now listen, I should say, I've never set foot in a head shop. I feel so like you I, don't have to. I'm, I feel like you yeah. you get the idea of what is going on in every square inch of a head shop when you like enter the block that that store is on. Well, here's the like thing about head because this you place start has getting that patchouli whiff, and then you know it's coming, and then you come around the corner and you see. Well, okay, you see the sign, but I don't know what the sign looks like, Dave. Mm, Matt. I actually would be willing to wager you know exactly what it looks like. (laughs) Here's the deal. I am going to... Okay, it's called Twisted Minds. Uh, The Minds is with a Z, which I think if you own a head shop and there is an S in the name, if there's one or more S's, at least one of them has to be a Z. I'm pretty sure that's in... That's a legal law that you have to follow. It's in the charter. Yeah. Yeah. So this... So Twisted Minds, the sign for their shop, uses... Not one, but two head shop fonts. Okay. You know the ones. Of, of course Like, you I just do. know. Like, you see a shop and, like, kind of whatever it's called. And it's almost always, it's either something about, like, Twisted or, like, whatever. Or it's some, it's some, like, stoner pun about smoking weed. Sure. Like, just- um, Alexis de Tocqueville. Ooh, I've never seen that. But <laughs> Neither that would have be I, very but good. wouldn't that be great? <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. Yeah, so the first one, Twisted, is in one font, and the and Minds is below it, and it's, uh, it's Jamaican flag colors. Of course. Re- reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> like, here's my, here's my beef with Twisted Minds. And the fact that I just uttered that sentence is um, amazing to me. But here's my, like, sort of beef with Twisted Minds, is that everything else on Lee is really, it's nice. Like, people have taken some time, you know, like, it's, like, set up, and it's, like, cool, because, like, everybody knows, like, oh, yeah, this is, like, a cool little zone. Sure. And Twisted Minds, I think, now listen, I think they recognize that their clientele does not necessarily care about, like, the, the decor of their head shop, but, like... It's really lame. Okay, like, here's if, the thing, though, Dave, is that their clientele does care about the decor of their head shop, and the decor that they care about is very specific. It is the specific decor of literally all head shops, because they all look the exact same. <laughs> and if they if yeah, they set up a baby. store that said Twisted Minds, but it was in, like, a nice font, or, like, a nice, crisp, like, crisp clear, like, Helvetica... And they weren't just, like, playing bad music that you could kind of hear when you walked past. Like, people wouldn't know how to find it. They would say, listen, I know, from the forums, you know, I was on Reddit earlier today in my, like, head shop subreddits. And they said that That's a new one was, they said that a new one was opening. And I got really excited. So I, I got the dog. And I got, you know, I, I put the whatever dumb costume I put on my dog on my dog. I feel like this is a dumb costume Matt, on the dog sort of person, the character that I'm doing right now. I don't know, Matt. Uh, I do just want to be very, I want to let you know that uh, Head Shop is absolutely a subreddit. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, as soon as you said it, I needed to find out and it's, it's a hundred percent true. Yeah. So, you know, they put a hat on their dog or whatever, and they walk out the door and they go down to the Cedar Lee district and they say, okay, here's the movie theater. Here's the restaurant. Here's the bar. Where, where, oh, where could the head shop be? I see something that says Twisted Minds with a Z. But, but surely, (laughs) surely to heaven. That sign's in Helvetica. (laughs) That can't be it. They must be talking about twisting an entirely different kind of mind than I'm into. Yeah, they've got like a lion statue and a Greco-Roman column out front. Like that can't. This no. must be an antique shop with a whimsical name. I need to keep Yeah, that's walking. gotta be the case. So, <laughs> so anyway, so Twisted Minds opened up. That's really it. Uh, what, Matt, is our fourth star of the week? Dave, our fourth star of the week is that I got to interact with the, uh, the annual event that is Corporate Challenge in what I think is 
the best way possible for me to do that. Okay. So last night... What is... I, I get home from work, right? And I'm sitting down for some dinner, and I'm going to play a video game for a bit. Tomb Raider. Not the you? not the newest one, but the, the one before that I'm replaying it, because I just played the new one, and the one before that is also very good. I almost made Tomb Raider a star at some point, but I feel like we talk about a lot of video games. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about it. Go play those Tomb Raider games. They're so good. So... But Sit down, you're going to play some Tomb Raider. I get a text from a friend of mine from work and says, Hey Matt, um, it's cool if you can't make it, but we're at the corporate challenge thing right now, and one of our skee-ball players just had to drop out, and we need someone to come in who's like from the office. Like, we need a guy on our team, and we don't have one anymore. Can you come play skee-ball with us, like, immediately, please? Like... Did he suffer some sort of skee-ball-related injury? <laughs> you know, I, I thought it was best not to pry. Um, and so I say, I, I you know, I equivocate for a minute, and then I say, sure, you know what? I'll go. I'll go play skee-ball with friends. What's better than that? I ask where it is. Now, if I recall, Matt, you're actually pretty good at skee-ball. Are you not? I had a period in my life where I was pretty good at skee-ball because... Have I talked on this show about how it, when I was in high school, I worked at Chuck E. Cheese for like six, seven months? Yeah, you did. Okay, so real quick, in case I didn't say it then. Sorry, I said, yeah, you did. Yes, you did do that thing. I don't know if you've ever mentioned it on oh, the show. Okay, well, real but quick. But yeah, you did work at Chuck E. Cheese for a couple months. Uh, if you work in the game room at Chuck E. Cheese, the first thing that you do, or the first thing you did when I was in high school at least, is uh, you do an activity called coin drop, where you put a coin into every machine in the place, and you play the game once, just to make sure that everything is functioning properly, right? Right. Which is, like, hands down, the best part, and probably the only good part of working for Chuck E. Cheese. So, the Chuck E. Cheese I worked at had, like, seven skee-ball lanes, and so every single shift, I would play, like, at least seven games of skee-ball. Um, and so by the end of working there, I had gotten pretty good at it. And so I have to, like, get back in the groove, but I can play skee-ball pretty well. Um, so, so then, your friends call. So, I, Matt, right. we have desperate need of a skee-ballist. Right. Uh, they give me the location. The location is a bar where there is just a bunch of skee-ball lanes. Cool. So, so uh, I, uh, like, it's downtown, and so I get, like, uh, a, a lift to come pick me up because I do not want to drive downtown ever. Not that dri driving in downtown Cleveland is very bad, but parking in downtown Cleveland is as expensive as me getting an Uber to downtown Cleveland, and so... Yeah, there's, like, literally no reason to drive downtown. Right. So, I get down there, and by the time I arrive, um, they had already played the first round, like, before the guy had to leave, and by the time okay. I arrived, I discovered that they were not advancing to the next round. Like, they hadn't done well enough to go on like done well enough or whatever right and so they did not actually need another skee-ball player so all i did was just to like get a text from a friend end up like going out to hang out with people after work and i didn't actually have to do any of the competition stuff and that i think if you can swing it is the best way to do it because yeah I didn't, that is I, uh like i didn't man, have to I'm succeed not... there was no pressure but everyone still thought I was a hero for showing up, even though yeah, man. there was no reason for me to have done so. I am not going to lie. That is just uh, that is just an extraordinarily narrow, like, that's a real tight needle to thread. But yeah, it sounds like if you can manage to do it, that's the perfect way to do corporate challenge. Yeah, so that's, that's my recommendation to all of you. Uh, be the emergency substitute on a skee-ball team that does not need you. So, Matt, what is our fourth, fifth, sorry, fifth star of the week? Dave, our fifth star of the week is this is an update on a previous commute update. Commute update! Okay, so normally we do commute updates. It's just something I saw on my way to or from work, right? And right. there's no there's no continuity to the commute update. It's a it's a one-off thing. It's a freak of the week, you know, 
like the bad well, yeah, episodes because, you know, of this show. That is how commute update is. Because you it, see a man or a woman on your commute, that's it. Right. But this time, Dave, this was like the sequel to the previous commute update. Because if you will recall, the previous commute update... Pirate 007ER. Tr- oh, I'm sorry. The, the one before that... Um, Pirate Trucker. Pirate Trucker. So the other day, I'm driving to work, and I'm stuck behind a cement mixer. I'm okay. stuck behind the cement mixer for a while, and then I sort of pull off into the next lane to hit the exit ramp. But I still, the, the way the exit ramp is situated there, I can still sort of see the highway. And I okay. see, not on the front of the car. Oh, by the way, once I get around the side, I see that the entire um, cement mixer is painted desert camo. Nice. And on the in the window, in the back of the cab, not on the front grill, but on the back of the cab... Jolly Roger. Same highway, by the way, that I had previously seen Pirate Trucker. So now, now we are building a, like, trucker cement mixer, just like large vehicle pirate fleet that just drives up and down 77? Yeah. Yes. This is true. This is real life. I have to assume that these people are connected. I Okay. I'm choosing to assume that they're connected. Um, because Desperately hoping that just feeds into this glorious theory of like eventually having this entire cadre. I'm sorry, no, I used the right word before. Fleet of Mad Max truckers. Um, it okay, was amazing. Matt, it made my entire day. I, Matt, I want to introduce a new idea because when it was only Pirate Trucker, I think we had to assume that this was just like a Mad Max scenario. I am now going to suggest to you. That what you have actually seen is two of the five parts of Devastator. Oh, now yeah, this I is think, something I had not considered. Yeah, or sorry, I shouldn't say Devastator because Devastator doesn't have a Mack truck. But a Devastator-like, I think we can only assume that it's a Decepticon, given well, the sure. pirate theme. Um. Yeah, so okay, so here are our options. We have Mad Max Preppers, basically. Uh, right. We have a a team of Batman villains that are pirate themed uh, truckers that all have yes. a specialty truck. You've got the cargo truck from the first one. You've got the cement mixer from the second one. Uh, I don't know what the other three are because there are bound to be five. Um, right. And then we've got a possible devastator, a potential devastator, or at least devastator adjacent. Yeah, like piratic con or. Piraticor, maybe. Piraticor. Piratomanticor. Piraticonius. If it was like a weird Beast Wars dude. Listen, there was bound to be a Manticore thing at some point. We don't need to get into potential Manticore pirate-themed combined Transformers from Beast Wars. What we do need to get into, Dave, <laughs> is episode 42 <laughs> of Ninja Sentai Cocker Ranger. Uh, one more time. That is called the Plundered Ninja Power. And we will be right back. Ninja, ninja. Okay, now let me talk for another second and wait for my microphone to stop freaking out and trying to listen to all the sounds in the room. Oh boy, I wish it would do that. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Um, I will ask Dave. All right, welcome back. So we have just finished watching episode 42 of Cocky Ranger. Um, this is a weird one. It's a good one. I thought it was a, it's a really good episode. And the thing I really dig about it is that it really feels like things are... It really feels like episode 42. Where, well, at, you know, like we were just talking last week, episode uh-huh. 41, we were saying, this does not feel like episode 41. This no. feels like episode, you know, 27 or something. Just kind of nothing is happening. I was going to say, I, now, I, I feel like last week felt like episode 27, but I feel like this week feels like episode 48. Like, this should be the last thing that happens in the show. <laughs> and then we just got, like, the final... Right. Like, I, well, we'll see. Let's just get into I it. I feel like this week and next week are the finale, and then there's just going to be seven more Freak of the Week episodes, and then the show is going to be over. And I don't know how to deal with that. <laughs> I feel I feel like that probably is not the case. I think we'll, we'll get some more stuff. Listen, Matt, who knows, man? We may get yet another giant robot. Okay. Okay. So... 
We start this episode, we are at Daimao's evil castle. And we know it's... I'm sorry, we're in a cave under the evil castle. And we know that it's... How do we know this? Well, it's an evil cave because in it, there is one skull, and that skull has a candle on top of it. The universal sign for evil. Or a playwright. Well, One of those two things. Or an evil playwright. You're either evil... Yeah, or your writing plays. So, Daimao is just... He's just having some sort of spasm, is what it looks like. He's just like a full body shouting. Yeah, he's just like shouting and having some sort of seizure. is is the closest like visual I can think of. And and the trouble is it. that Daimyo's look. It's a very complicated like sculpt, you know, like the like monster yeah. suit that he wears. But it doesn't and allow it looks for cool. A, it looks very cool in a static frame. But when he's trying to like really emote like this, it just it looks not. like a refrigerator is shouting at you. Yeah, like it is not built in order for like this dude to be able to move around. So he is like freaking out, and then it's actually a neat effect. They just put a balloon in his mouth, and he blows the balloon up, and then there's a camera cut, and then it's like an egg. Yeah. So he has like. He puked has up like, an egg, sort he's of. He's puked up this egg. Well, he didn't because it literally expanded out of his mouth. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But he he drops the egg and it's filled with goo. Evil and like goo. A little, it's like yeah, bad, evil like, goo. like mean Gak. Like if Gak was a villain. Well, that's exactly what it is. It is, in fact, a villain. And just like a little a little dude is in it. Yeah, so it's, says, it, ah. it's a big egg full with, like, a little action figure dude in it. So, basically, like, Daimyo has just horked up, a like, a, a gnarly kinder egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, this little bro. And he looks yeah, down. And there's this little bro, looks, like, in the goo. Yeah. And he says, oh, this... He's like, this is my clone. This terrible, gloopy which is, clone. <laughs> yeah. And it's just... Okay, so first of all, I think that Daimo does not know what a clone is. No, because this thing does not look even a little bit like Daimo. Yeah, this is 100% not a clone of Daimo. It is just like a little monster, and it is called Dara Dara. Now, I want to be very clear about something. It's not called Doro Doro, which are the goons nope. that are in every episode of this show. It's very slightly different. So try to keep yeah. up. We will do our best to enunciate. Yeah, so it's Dara Dara, and he is it, it, like he's just he's just a monster. Um, but he says, like, I've been waiting for this. This Dara Dara will kill all the, the, he'll kill the Rangers. He'll kill the three God Generals. He's going to kill Ninja Man. He's going to kill all of them all at once. Like, this is it. But first, everybody else go, like, maybe was just like a placeholder. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Right. Um, what did I say? Well, I mean, I think he would have been happy if everyone else, if anyone else had beaten them. But this, I feel yeah. like, is the thing he'd been like, this was his Trump. He's been sitting on this. It's in his back pocket. Right. Like, and well, now actually, there's finally time. Yeah. So Hakamenro, who, if you remember, is Tsuruhime's dad and is, like, undercover with the yokai. Yes. At he some point a long plan. time ago, he had tried to go attack the yokai and they would have killed him, except that he agreed to work for them. Right. But he didn't really. He's been undercover this whole time. Right. Deep, deep cover. Right. Evil cover. Yeah, super deep cover. So he hears this plan, and he's like, okay, well, I've got to, like, I've got to go. So he leaves. Cut to what I think is, like, the Surihime family mansion. Or at least, like, outside of it, in the woods. Yeah, I think so. So there's a lightning storm, and it's Bun. We've gotten Bun back. Bun is Sandayu's erstwhile apprentice. Yes. And Bun has two like, dogs. Yes. I just like, dude, Bun is the single most intriguing character in this show. Like, I need to know what is up with this, like, tiny dude. He's like a little boy yeah. who is completely treated 
as like absolutely capable and like he can just like, oh yeah, Bun will take care of it. And he just rolls around with these dogs all the time. And he was Sunday use apprentice. And like I just I right. need to know He shows up once every fifteen episodes and they never tell you what they have not yet told you what his deal is. Now, the only yeah. there is a thing that like at some point we got um a flashback showing that Surahime had these like twin foster brothers, like older brothers who right. disappeared when they went with Hakumenro to go attack the yokai. Bun has two dogs, and I think there is a connection between those two. I could be totally wrong. I'm just saying it now in it case could... I turn out to be right. Right. Like, we just don't know is the thing. Like, I just I want to know what's up with this kid. But we don't got. No. So... But Hakumenro clearly does. Because he's talking to Bun in the middle of this thunderstorm, and he says, listen... We've got a problem. They have a plan to, like, capture Ninja Man, and they are targeting... They're going to, like, capture Ninja Man, and they have a plan to target and destroy all the Kaki Rangers and the God Generals. So, like, we can't have this happen. You need to go warn them. I can't go, obviously, because, like, I'm still undercover. And I think yes. that Daimao might be beginning to suspect me. Right. He says, there's been a little bit of... Mm, we don't know. But so, like... But you've got to go. Like, you go, you tell them, let and, like, we'll figure this out. Like, it'll be cool. So Bond's like, all right, cool. I got it. Oh, we did just find it. Sorry, there was thing I was going to say real quickly is that it's not actually, and this is where we find this out, it's not that uh, Daimu has been sitting on this. It's that he is 12,000 years old now, 1,200 years old. And having reached his 1,200th birthday, now he can make this clone. Which is a weirdly specific way to level up. Like, okay, so, you know, you have all these powers and abilities and you get better and you, as you get older, maybe, if you're a yokai. But the thing that you get on your, 12, 000, your 1200th birthday is the ability to, like, puke up a little gloopy monster. Like, that is so weirdly specific. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Anyways, so... <laughs> So, yeah, that's his 1200th. It's a yokai thing, man. I don't know. Just hashtag yokai so, things. Right. So Bun says, like, all right, cool. Like, I'm going to go. So they part ways. On to Nakamaru. And everybody's just hanging out. They're making crepes. And Ninja Man is, like, he's playing with a little kid. Hey, man, Ninja Man loves not, children. It, yeah, he does. And that in and of itself is not weird. I just... I continue to be amazed at the chillness of people yeah, about like, Ninja Man. Like, I'm not surprised that Ninja Man would want to play with a little kid. And I'm not surprised that a little kid would want to play with Ninja Man. Because like, if you're a little no, kid and there's not, like, a, it's, like a cool ninja superhero, not even that. that's amazing. It's like, that, that's right. No, no. He likes kids, like, whatever. Those things are it's, fine. It is all yeah. the adults around who are like, oh, yeah, sure. Here's just this giant blue man with a sword who is, like, goofing off with this little girl in a park. Yeah, and there is and zero fine. reaction. Like, I don't get it. So anyways, uh, but Ninja Man is talking with this kid. Her name is Yoko. And they're, like, hanging out. And they're like, hey, Ninja Man, like, and he's like, okay, cool. And the girl has to go. And they, like, roll over. And then there's, like, a weird joking about it because they're, like, they tease Ninja Man as though, like, about, Oh, yeah, like, like he was a on romantic a date relationship? with this little girl. Yeah, and then Ninja Man feels the need to like. Would I mean like he vehemently denies this? He's like, no, it's not like that. Just like Ninja Man, no, we we were joking, dude. We did not assume that you were really going on a date with right. that child. Nobody the, thought yeah. that. No, That's I, I think they were just. I think that they were just teasing him, and maybe Ninja Man does not like. You know, he hasn't been around people in a thousand years. Remember how, how he was put in a, a pot and thrown into space as yeah, a, no, that's as what a I'm prison saying. sentence? Like Ninja Man. When no, it's he a was, joke, dude. It's, no, I'm, it's I'm cool. Just, I'm just reminding everyone that it, for a thousand years, Ninja Man lived in a pot in space because he got tricked into murdering a bunch of innocent townsfolk. I just want to remind everybody of that periodically because it's buck wild and I feel like we never talk about it anymore. <laughs> Man, I would like we can't keep track, dude. We can't possibly be expected to remind people of all the nutty stuff that happens on this show. Okay, so, so Ninja Man is saying, "No, I was just hanging out with her because her dad." And there's this weird bit in here where like Ninja Man tries to tell everyone that like 
her dad is like traveling for work or something. But like yeah, he well, got the exactly word wrong. Happening. And there's a bit where like they're joking about his like linguistic flub. And maybe it's hilarious, but the like the subtitles do not get that across to me at all. Yeah, like in Japanese or in English, it doesn't really it doesn't really play. So he's like, listen, I'm, I'm hanging out with this girl because her dad is gone for work. Parents, sh-, he says, that's bad. Parents should not leave their kids alone. And this makes Tsuruhime sad because, of course, her dad, her dad has left. Yes. And everyone sort of like, once they realize what Ninja Man is saying, everyone else sort of like jumps and like tries to like cover up his mouth. But I'm not sure they know where his mouth is because it's covered in Ninja Helmet. So they're just like putting their hand on his face, like trying to get him to stop talking. In, like, a general mouth region. And that is not... uh, It does not work. And so, Tsuruhime is very sad. And then, the little girl is abducted by the Kunoichigumi. Yes. They show up, and they've got a bunch of Dorodoros in tow. They grab the girl, and then everybody runs to go save her. Right. So, they run. The Henge... uh, The fight is, like, fairly standard, although there is one beautiful moment where Sasuke is trying to hit the red lady ninja and she is teleporting away just before he hits her every time. But as she is doing it, she's just kind of standing there, like looking at her nails, being super duper bored. It's very good. Actually, what's cool about yeah, this it's fight like, is that this is the first time in a while that the Kunoichi Gumi have been like competent. You know, like the last couple of times we've seen them, like they're definitely like, you know, they're better than the Doro Doros, but they're not like gonna win any fights and in this one they actually keep the cocky rangers on the ropes for a while which i think yes. makes it more interesting yeah it is uh it's a good fight and so let's see they like they grab the girl they run they're chasing uh the rangers say like okay listen you go get the girl we're gonna stay here and like hold these other guys off yeah so ninja they say man, this to ninja man they don't just say it yeah so yeah sorry so ninja man he runs and as he is about to catch up with the whatever Kunoichigumi it is that has the girl and girl, like chains spring up out of the ground. And he is like wrapped up and trapped. And the- <laughs> it's just clearly supposed to be like a super dramatic moment. And- but for some reason, they just choose to shoot it like they wanted to get a back angle on it. And like they just shoot it with a big water fountain, like taking up like a third of the foreground of the shot. Well, okay, actually, so you, you may have been like looking away from the screen to write down that note because I thought that as well, but there actually is a reason that that was in the foreground um, because Ninja Man like breaks out of the chains and says like, why did you think that that would hold me? I'm Ninja Man and starts to advance on the Kuchuimi. Kuchuimi. God, I was, I was doing so well earlier. He starts did. to advance on her, and uh, out of the drain, like out of the faucet of this drinking fountain, comes like that evil goop from earlier, and like the goop then reconstitutes into Dara Dara. Yes, Dara Dara has now managed to like sneak up on Ninja Man and grabs him from behind. Oh, he's got like weird, like sticky Sucky suction fingers. cup fingers. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but he does have them. So, oh, by the way, uh, Bun's dogs appear and save Yoko. So, like, the girl is safe. Yes. The girl is safe, but uh, Dara Dara has Ninja Man, and the uh, lady ninja says, Hey, listen, FYI, now that he has grabbed onto you, um, he will, like, you can never make him let go. And he starts, like, using his sticky fingers to absorb Ninja Man's, like, crazy ninja powers out of him. Yeah. Ninja Man, he starts freaking out. He's like, oh, I know. Like, I'll go giant. That will will work. So he goes giant. And at first it looks like it's going to work. But then Dara Dara, just like while he's latched on, also goes giant. So now they're just both giant. Yes. And he continues to, like, suck the power away from him. We, We don't see the end of this fight, but... Ninja Man loses because we're about to find out like he's been captured. So we go back to the truck and it's just Bun with the dogs. He's talking to the Rangers and he explains the whole situation. He's like, listen, it's this clone monster and it sucks energy and they got Ninja Man and 
like this is this is what's up. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Suruhime very reasonably <laughs> says so cool, cool, cool. But like, thanks for the heads up, buddy. Right, great job. Weirdly competent little kid. How do you know all of this? Like, like what's going on? You clearly, and what she says is, you must have a yokai friend. Like, you have to have somebody who's feeding you inside information. And then she jumps. She says, is it my dad? Like, is it Hakamenro? You've got to tell me. And Bun is like, no, no, no. That is not it. Uh, it's not your dad. It totally isn't. Also, I have to go now. <laughs> Unrela- I have to completely go unrelated, but I need to leave right now after vehem- vehemently denying that it is your dad. See you later. Bye. I'm a little kid and don't know now how to deal with this kind of situation. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's very so... confident at, like, you know, sneaking around and having his dogs and saving people and being a courier. He is not super good at lying because he is still eight. I was going to say, he has not gotten to that part of his ninja training yet, you know? So Suruhime is like, oh, well, clearly he's lying. So that must mean that my dad actually is good. Like, we had kind of suspected it earlier. Like, this is, like, confirmation. I don't need to be sad about my dad anymore. Clearly he's on our side and is doing some secret thing. This is great. And she gets very excited. And Sasuke, in sort of a reasonable move, is like, listen, um... Like, basically, you might want to temper your expectations. Like, that could be very good news. But don't, you know, don't go all in on that yet. And also, we need to go find Ninja Man first before we deal with any of that. Yeah. Like, this could... We just have to, like, yeah, this is a whole big thing. But she is, like, moving forward through this episode, she is now very much, like, in the mindset that her dad is a cool dude. Right. So, you know, cool for her. Yeah. So we cut from there to uh, Daimao's palace, where Ninja Man is once again wrapped up in chains, but this time unable to break himself free. Yes. So, well, he tries, because he does not quite, like, totally understand, like, precisely what's happening yet. And he's like, what? He says the exact same thing. He says, like, these chains can't hold me. And he tries to break out of them. And again, he can't. Right. And Daimai was Daimo, just mocking him. Like, oh, you can't even break out of a little chain, huh? Yeah. And what he says is, you're no more. He says, you're just as vulnerable or, like, you're just as weak as a human now. Because Dara Dara, you'll never be a giant again. Dara Dara has stolen all of your ninja power. But ultimately, you are only bait for the three god generals. Right. He says, I kind of only care about you because I'm trying to get to them. Right. Like, I've already beaten you. You are done. You are no longer a concern to me. You are literally only still alive because I want to go murder the three god generals. Yeah. And uh, Ninja Man is like, oh, no, you can't do that. Like, those are my guys. Those are my masters. Like, I would really appreciate you not murdering them. They are very important. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, I'm gonna. So, Dara Dara, so basically the plan is Dara Dara is just gonna go out into the city and cause a big ruckus, and that's gonna draw the three god generals out. And it 100% works. Well, okay. Yeah, I mean, here's what happens. There. So, he goes out, he causes a ruckus. And th- sorry, this is what my notes say it works. It 100% works. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, wait, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because here's what happens. Dara Dara goes out and he's like, he just punches a couple of buildings and the Kaku Rangers show up and are like, oh, here is Monster. We Kaku Rangers, that monster. Like, now yeah. we do Kaku Ranger things at it. At some point yeah. in that example, they all became Tarzan? Um, but you get what I mean. Yeah, so Suruhime is the one who says, she's about to henge. She's like, this is just, we're gonna... Like, we're going to do this. Sasuke says, no, hold up. Like, we like, this know is, this that is this Dara Dara monster. Yeah, he's like, this is obviously a trap. Like, this Dara Dara monster steals ninja powers. We can't summon the three god generals. We have to figure out another way to do this. Like, no, we, we can't do it. 
which, which is a nice thought. And you really do think that they're going to try to, like, think their way out of this problem. But then Dara Dara punches another building, and Tsurukime says, Ah, eh, but we really should try, right, though? And they all yeah. just like, okay, sure. That one building was the... That was the building that broke the giant robot camel's back. Yeah. Man, imagine a giant robot camel. That would be very cool. That would be really cool. I wonder... Anyways, no, we can't go down that rabbit hole, Matt. So they, uh, you know, so they suit up, they summon, they summon Kakure Daishogun. And there is, we uh, we do find out that Daimu is like phantom controlling Dara Dara, kind of? Yeah, like he is back in his palace and he is sort of doing punchy motions. And then it cuts to Dara Dara who is doing those same punchy motions. But better because yeah. he's in a more articulated costume. Yes. So Dara Dara, like, he spits up some sort of acid, goopy, like evil goop. He spits evil goop at Kakarei Dai Shogun. This is a goop heavy episode. It is an oddly goop heavy episode. And so. And, and not like the got, like, Gwyneth Paltrow website. Which. Which does what, that stand for something? I, I assume like, that the G did... and P in Goop are for Gwyneth Paltrow somehow, but I've never gone out to like really check it out. Because somehow, I think that that website is probably more evil than the Goop in this episode. So, the Goop gets all over uh, Kakure Dai Shogun. Um, uh, Super Samura shows up forms Super Kakure Dai Shogun, and then, like, the fight sort of becomes a little more even again. Yeah. Sorry, Matt, I was looking up Goop real quick, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so... <laughs> what, does it stand so for something? Form Super Kakure wait, wait, no, 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 hold on, hold on, we'll, we'll sync back up for a second, what does it stand for? I, it's a garbage website. It's uh, It literally just exists to be like fake news to sell people stuff. Oh, listen, I know that it doesn't actually like stand for anything in a moral sense. I want to know if goop, like the letters are an acronym. Oh, it doesn't say. It just says goop, and then it says get gooped, make every choice count, and then that's as far as I got. I do not want to get gooped. I don't want anybody to get gooped. Nobody should get gooped. Least so of all anyways, Super Kakure Dai Shogun. We were going to cut this bit out of the episode. I thought we were just having a chat about a website, but now we've called it back in. I think we just keep moving. Just roll with it. It's extremely so, hot. Super, I don't have enough energy yeah. in me to cut back any times. So, <laughs> Super Kakure Dai Shogun, uh, he does, they do a wing blast. He does super flying punch. He does a kick. Uh, like, And it seems as though Dara Dara bites it. Yeah, like he explodes. But, all are thrilled. But he does not. Yeah. I mean, Ninja Man, we cut back to uh, the evil palace. Ninja Man is thrilled because he's like, ah, you tried to get my masters, but obviously you failed because they're way better than you. And yes. Daimayo says, yeah, but don't you remember? Like, this isn't just a giant Dara Dara monster. This is also all of your ninja powers. So check this action out. So Dara Dara, like, gets back up and he transforms like into a hybrid version of Dara Dara and Ninja Man. But this is really cool because it's not just like, it's not Ninja Man's like metallic looking armor. It's very obviously sort of organic like, it looks like it's, like, swirly and monstery, but it is also very definitely Ninja Man, which is pretty rad. Yeah, like, parts of the sort of, like, swirly, goopy surface of Dara Dara have, like, reshaped themselves to mimic Ninja Man. Yes. So, he gets back up, and, like, the fight starts going back towards his way, right? Because uh, Kakarei Daishogun was not expecting this, and now Dara Dara has a sword, and he is doing, like, crazy ninja attacks... And everything is going yes. badly until a great moment where the sword is about to hit Super Kakarei Daishogun. Oh, yeah. And a hand reaches in, a giant robot hand reaches in from off screen to grab the sword mid-strike. And it's Muteki Shogun who has just shown up. Yeah, and he, he, his only catch line is Muteki Shogun is here, but he does say it, which is cool. And he's got that great... So, dude, Muteki Shogun's voice almost never says so anything, good. but it's so good. Because it sounds like a building is talking at you. 
Just this like yeah, giant really... reverberating thing. So they do they do a couple more moves. He does flaming shogun sword, which is great because we haven't seen that in a minute. And Dara Dar like is taking hits, but doesn't seem to be getting hurt. And then oh, and he hits him with rage bomber. Oh, that's right. He hits them with Dara Dara rage bomber. Yeah. So we're trying to figure out like what's going on because he's obviously getting tagged, but he's not going down. And then Ninja Man just kind of appears on a on a nearby roof. And what we find out is that, and Daimu appears to like narrate this whole thing or exposit this whole thing. And he says, listen, I don't know why he's bothering to explain this, but when Dara Dara gets hurt, because he has stolen Ninja Man's power, when you hit Dara Dara, it like Tomax Zamots the damage onto Ninja Man. Right. So like... If you continue to de- like attack Dara Dara, like you probably will eventually win. And what's cool is like as this fight continues, you can tell that like these two giant, like you know, all three of the god generals working together, like Dara Dara is even the ninja man version of Dara Dara. Like he's tough, but he's not that tough. Like Dara Dara is going to lose this fight, except that if they kill him, Ninja Man dies, and Ninja Man yes, is like their I eternal did. bro. Right, I did really dig that that was the case. Because otherwise I was like, well, why is Ninja Man's power the tipping point? He is, like, he's, he's their, their student. Apprentice. There should, there's yeah. no, yeah, he shouldn't be, but but this now kind of makes sense. Right, the, the, the tipping point is not his power, but the three god generals, like, compassion towards their student. Which is cool, it's a good, good moment. Especially yep. because, like, in this show, you know, the three god generals are, like, sentient creatures. But we don't get a lot of, like, you know, they're not really, like, fleshed out characters at all. We never get that yeah, from them. Yeah, and they're, like, it's, like, a whole weird thing. Because they do summon the robots to make Kakurei Dai Shogun, but Kakurei Dai Shogun is also its own god general. And, like, the same with Mateki Sh- it's a, It's a whole weird thing. Yeah, and so, like, in this so moment, anyways, you can tell that, like, when the three god generals, like, look over to look at Ninja Man to realize what's going on, that, it doesn't feel like the cocky rangers, like, controlling the cockpit to make it look. It looks like all three of the god generals just looking down at Ninja Man. Yeah, it's pretty rad. So, they, they do call Daimo a coward. The rangers do. They're like, you're a coward. And he's just like, that's, he, yes, I am. That's the yokai. You got that's it. the yokai thing. We're all cowards. We don't fight fair. Cowardice is yokai's privilege. Yeah, deal with it. So Ninja Man, he says like, listen, don't worry about me. You've got to defeat Dara Dara. Like, kill him anyways. It doesn't matter if I die. Yeah. And how come they're about to like do something to try and feed Ninja Man but Hakamenro appears, like he kind of like runs out from behind, and he pulls his sword, his giant crazy sword, and he puts it to Ninja Man's head, and he seems to be having some sort of moment, like maybe this is the moment to blow his cover, like free Ninja Man, do something else. We're not totally sure, because he doesn't actually do anything. He just looks very portentous. Like he he emotes real hard into the camera. Yeah, he says nothing, but the impression that he gives... The impression that he gives us is what Dave just said. The impression that he gives the Kaku Rangers is, if you take another step, I'm just going to kill Ninja Man. Yeah, like that's it. And Tsurihime, of course, at this point, because she had been thinking that her dad was now a good guy again, she's heartbroken by this. Yes. And everyone's just shouting at this point. Like, every, like Ninja Man's shouting, and the Rangers are shouting, and Daimyo's shouting, and the, the robots aren't shouting, but... They, you know, they're screaming internally, I'm sure. Yeah, obviously. So there's all sorts of stuff happening. But Dara Dara uh, is still in this fight. So he just turns into like, he, he pulls his like crazy sucker fingers back out. And he just goes nuts on the three Gon Generals. And just like a lightning zaps them until they all fall over. Yeah. And then they just fall over. Hakamenro again, he like emotes real hard. Bun appears. Daimau is like, Dara Dara, take these chumps out. And that's it. Yeah, like, that's it for a- our episode. We got a cliffhanger, my friends. Which is why, like I said, this feels like the second or third to last episode of the show. Yeah. Um, It's a very good episode. I feel like... <laughs> 
this show is gonna end up having like three finales because I still think that the uh, the young noble like the end of the young noble junior stuff felt like a finale too. But again, that is a conversation for the end of the season. Dave, the conversation for the end of this episode is that I'm about to ask you. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I was going to ask you where you thought say, that Dara Dara would fare in the Creature Royale, but he's not but dead he's, yet. I was going to say, he's still standing and so, so far is doing pretty well, having taken out all three Gon Generals. So now I th- we, we're not going to talk about the Creature Royale this episode, but I'm really, really into this episode. I feel like the, the drama is ratcheting up and we're getting all sorts of crazy stuff happening. Uh, I'm interested to see what's going to come next. I honestly until That's this much. Yeah, until this episode I had forgotten that Bun existed because we haven't seen him in like a very long time. Though I had two my notes actually just say who is this kid? Oh, it's Bun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I had kind of thought that that was a thread that maybe was just never going to come back. Um and so that that I think is how you can tell that it's like an important story episode if Bun's in it. Cuz like how come <laughs> is an episode that aren't like super important, but Bun has never been in a non significant episode. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess it's a that, weird. It's a yeah. weird marker for significance. Right. This one little kid is in. If it, there's an eight year old kid deal. with two dogs, then you know it's a big deal. Um, but yeah, I guess that is actually going to do it for this episode of A View to a Cocker Ranger. Uh, before yep. we finish up here, I'd like to remind you all: you can email the show at supersentibrothers at gmail dot com. If you want to get any updates on future episodes or check out the things that we're talking about on Twitter, we're at Super Sentai Bros. If you like the show, please remember, shining in the iTunes review section, there are five stars. Rate and review on there. That's what's going to help new people find the show. Uh, the Super Sentai Brothers are a production of Retrograde Orbit Radio. If you'd like to listen to any of the other great Retrograde Orbit Radio shows, one of which is recording right now. Uh, Mont Olympus is doing a recording right now. Let's, oh, right on. That's just a little trivia for those of you who have waited through the end bit of the show. Uh, you can find them all at RetrogradeOrbitRadio.com. Once again, we're the Super Sentai Brothers. I'm Matt. I'm Dave. And we'll see you next week for the greatest show on Earth. Kaku!